Dr. Sally here, and as I've said in many videos, I have worked with clients in 45 states. I've worked with Canadian clients at the high school level that play anything from 12, you know, 12 man Canadian football to 11 man football to 9 man football in Canada. I've worked with Division 2, 3, NA, JUCO, and prep school clients over the last 13 years. And it's always interesting to see what coaches' priorities are. And I've learned this many, many years ago. I went to the Steelers after they won the Super Bowl against the Seahawks in, I believe it was 2006. I went down that offseason to the Steelers. They had a, a private clinic at a UPMC, which is their training facility. And Coach Cowher spoke, Charlie Batch spoke, Mr. Rooney spoke um, before he passed away. And not Art Sr., but Dan spoke. And it was a really powerful experience. But the strength and conditioning coach, Chet Furman, spoke. And he said things in 2006 that changed how I view the sport of football. I'm gonna share that with you right now. The answer to successful coaching is always this. If you wanna see a successful football program, they're gonna be doing this. They're gonna be practicing the game. They're gonna be practicing the game. They do not waste time doing drills, hoping that it translates that film. They cut right to the chase in what matters most. What are they doing? Situational football. They're practicing first down because the bottom line is this, anything you read about the success rate of first down, how that translates <coughs> to your success is so powerful. When you listen to NFL head coaches, they're the best CEOs you're going to find. You want to find the true leaders of men. Look at NFL head coaches right now, the guys that are winning the Doug Petersons who have come out of nowhere to now take Jacksonville to greater heights. The Bill Belichick's, the, the Bill Cowers. It's guys like that that are really transcending performance of sport. Doug Peterson said during the Eagles Super Bowl run that they had a surreal third down percentage rate. It was over 50%. And he was asked, why are you so good on third down? And he says, because we're good on first down. And, you, and if you're good on first down and you're practicing your first down situations, that is the key down to success. And it's been proven if you get five plus yards on first down, whether it's run or pass, your chance of winning is 83%. That was based on a 2014 quantitative study. Your chance of winning if you get five plus on first down, it's 83%. Now, Brian Belichick intimated years ago that if you average four plus yards rushing on first down, your chance of winning is literally, it is literally almost impossible to lose. Now, this is in the NFL, but they're the best coaches in the world. They're smarter than you, they're smarter than me. Don't care how many doctors I have. They know how to get it done. Brian Bill said if you average four plus yards rushing on first down, you're not losing. Barring an act of God. So you need to be practicing situational football, but you really need to be practicing first down. So instead of doing conditioning drills and agility drills and trying to train kids like it's the military, just practice the game. Practice the game, run plays. You can you can get shamed and guilted and condemned and besmirched at the fundamental to your blow in the face. Fundamentals are built in the team environment because you're never going to get great at fundamentals unless skill and line are practicing together. And listen, I used to be one of you slappies that would do that. I used to do all these drills and then bring everybody together to go team and then basically you have to start over when you go team because nobody knows what they're doing. And you can say, well, maybe that's because things weren't taught right. No. It was because when there's a center snap and now you've got to deal with alignment, and now you've got to deal with assignment. Everything you just did in Indy went out the window. So you're better off cutting to the chase and running freaking plays. So 
This is how I get my teams on that testimonial page. Go to tripleoptionfootball.com slash testimonial because we cut to the chase in how to create the elite performance environment. We create the elite performance environment because we practice situational football. Nothing's more important than practice than first down. Practice it on the short side of the field. Watch what happens. Keep in mind, football is played somewhere around two-thirds to three-quarters of the game. It depends on what study you read. Two-thirds to three-quarters of the game, the game is played on a hash. So if you practice on the short side of the field, you are going to get closer to winning because you're practicing that scenario. First down, short side of the field. If you just do that, you're going to be ahead of 90 plus percent of these high school areas you coach against because they're not doing that. They're 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 doing deconstruction drills and agility drills and conditioning drills because they don't know what to do. They know they have to have a practice, but they don't know what to do in practice. And that is a massive dirty secret in the coaching profession. They know they have to have a practice, but they don't know what to do with practice. So you practice situational football. 20% of your practice has to be special teams because 20% of the game is special teams. I had an assistant coach at Memphis that said it's around 18%. I've had others say 20. Regardless, one fifth of your practice has to be spent on special teams. If you're going to practice special teams, you've got to practice punt. Because if you suck, you're going to do it a lot. So until you prove you don't suck, you got to practice punting the ball. Plus, there's four things that go wrong with, that can go wrong with a punt. The snap, the punt, the protection, the coverage. Okay, this is a triple option channel. We'll get back to triple option. Sport specificity. Are you actually functionally conditioning your players? The problem is coaches don't know how to do that because... They get shamed, guilted, condemned by some assistant coach who wants to do things like they were done in 1988. Tell that son of a gun to shut his mouth and get his can out of here because you're the boss. You're the boss. The W's and L's go after your name. You're the boss. If he doesn't like it, he better learn to love it because, baby, you're where it's freaking at. So anyway, sports specificity. Just run plays. Run plays against real defenses. Do it so much the players think with their feet they can't get it wrong. Don't worry about what your assistant coaches say because at the end of the day, most of them either add no value or hurt you. Most of them. Had this conversation with one of my clients the other day. If you've got two assistants that actually further your process, you're ahead of 80 plus percent of the schools in the country. That's qualitative analysis, to some extent quantitative analysis, of me traveling the country the last 14 years. You're going to use Parkinson's law, which is you're going to shorten work time to limit tasks to be important. So instead of having a long practice, you could be Johnny Tryhard. You actually go out and you say, look, we're going to create urgency by basically getting you out the field as fast as possible. But we're going to practice the game so you're ready to win the game so you can be, you know, Captain Awesome at school every day. So you're going to shorten work time to limit tasks to important. And then Pareto, the Pareto Principle, which is my doctoral dissertation was on the Pareto Principle, this is limiting tasks to the important to shorting work time, which means do less. Do less. You want to get kids to get good fast at the high school level, do less. Unless you are going to call a play at least four times a game, do not install it. Only install that which you are actually going to run four times a game. And listen, I was guilty of that too. I installed stuff and didn't run it four times a game. And knew better. Shame on me! So here's the thing. That is what proves you're successful. You're going to get closer to winning if you do that. Practice the game with situational football, especially first down football on the short end of the field. 20% of your practice has to be special teams. Yeah, I know it's a triple option channel, but you need to know this. Sports specificity, meaning you are functionally conditioning your players through running plays and not goofy laps or goofy gassers or the, the, the dirty word now, suicides, which in, the, in this you know mental health crisis we have, 
I don't know if I want to use that word, although you're talking to somebody who is politically incorrect as it gets. If you have watched all these YouTube videos, you'd understand that I'm very politically incorrect. <sighs> Free speech, baby. Parkinson's law, you shorten work time to limit tasks important because that's how you create urgency. You don't create urgency by yelling all the time. You create it by making people get X amount of things done in the shortest period of time possible. That's how you do it. And you limit tasks to the important short work time, which is going to create accuracy. So your players can learn fast, so they can play fast, so they can be fast, so they can get you to win, so you can walk around the school like you're Mr. Awesome, and all the freaking woke teachers in the school are going to hate your guts because you're winning, but you're going to love it, because you know you're better than everybody else. I had this conversation with somebody not long ago. I said, the beauty of high school football in this country, it's the only high school sport where they literally shut down the news on a Friday night to tell you who won the game. They don't do it with basketball. They don't do it with baseball. They don't shut down the news early for track. They don't do it for wrestling. They don't do it for cross country or golf or tennis. And I love tennis. But I'm going to tell you right now, they don't shut down the news on Friday nights and ended early to tell you what the tennis score was. But they do for high school football. And that's what separates you from the rest of the Ham and Acres. So when you win, people are going to hate you. But whether they like it or don't like it, they got to learn the level because, baby, you're where it's at. But it's time for you to be Captain Awesome. The answer to successful coaching is always you're practicing the game. You're practicing situations. You're 20% of your practicing special teams. You're sports specific to get functional conditioning. You're using Parkinson's law on the principle. I'm done. You want to win more games? Call me. See you.